Ostritter. I teach at Western Kentucky University. Currently, we are in the ceramics studio. I'm helping a student, Sarah West, uh, with part of her video series, To the Wheel and Beyond. So today, we are going to be talking about handles. First, I'm going to introduce some handles on some mugs, and then I'll be demoing how to pull a handle off of a form. But I also just want to say, um, I recommend watching the Pete Pinnell video on handles that's on YouTube. It's like 30 minutes. He does a great job talking about the differences in how people drink and different handles. So I have some examples here also. First off, I just want to say one of the things as a student that really kind of was an aha moment for me when I was learning is how material can affect the handle. So how different materials will pull at different thicknesses or thinnesses and just the quality and characteristics of the clay can really affect the handle and so it's not that uncommon you know when I first tried porcelain I remember just being like oh wow that's just amazing I had only thrown stoneware before um, so here I've brought some different you know this is a kind of groggy porcelainous clay body this is an earthenware this is a these are a little bit more um, true porcelains this I'm not, I don't have these recipes, I don't know, so I'm just going off of the way they feel and look. This is also, seems to be more of a porcelainous, and then this is a stoneware, an iron-rich stoneware. So first, you know, all of these handles I consider comfortable, and so I just kind of wanted to talk about, this um, mug is made by a good friend, Ryan Van Hoy, and this is just one of, just a really amazingly comfortable handle. I think it suits this hot really well. It kind of has a casualness about it that I really like. Um, I love the juiciness of both the start and finish of the handle and it's just, he, he does really great handles in general I think. Martina Lanton. This I just think is kind of fun. You know it goes along with the decoration she's put on the side and how it just shoots up. Again she has really generous uh, Kind of junctures there where it's attached to the cup and it's just kind of a nice I like that it's higher than the cup itself and it's just a fun handle this handle is Chris Baskin and really he is the guy that I was watching attach handles and make handles that was that aha moment with the porcelain um, how just amazingly thin and delicate this handle is on a relatively like a larger form than maybe you would imagine you'd put something on like this and the way that he would finish it where it's just that real sweeping finish at the end um, I think is pretty cool and it's also really a nice comfortable handle this mug is Charity Davis Woodard and you know attaching this a little bit lower again it's a one finger you know kind of like this one here um, attaching it at the waist and one of the things I really like that she does is she will for one that's kind of interesting her attachment goes almost to where the bottom of the handle is so you can kind of see the end of the clay here and then she's looping it up but I really like how she finishes it with this a little bit of texture there. And I can't help, when I'm drinking out of this mug, whether I'm walking around or just kind of hanging out at the, in the office or studio, um, I always kind of notice that I'll drop that finger and just kind of <laughs> rub that a little bit. And it's just really lovely. I love that. More than I realized I would, I think, when um, I got the mug. This mug is Elise Helen Hansen. And she is doing a similar thing that Charity's doing in the sense that she's connecting in the waist of the cup. Um, I love how she flares the top. It kind of is a nice kind of open. Um, and then the other thing she's doing is then she's punching in behind the handle. So you're getting this kind of full circle effect that's happening. Uh, she also just makes a really great handle. You know, some of the, my favorites are the ones that just look so unassuming. They don't have this kind of flair about them. And then you're holding and using them. It's just like, that's awesome. And then I wanted to show one of uh, my handles, since I'm doing the demo today, I wanted to get, show you all just a final piece or a finished handle of what I'll be demoing. Um, so I, this is one of the mugs I have. I have a lot of different potters 
mugs at home, but I do have a few of my own, and this is one of the favorites of mine that I drink from regularly. I like, you know, just a straightforward body and then just kind of a nice, almost all your fingers fit in there, three finger handle, uh, and the softness of it. So there you have it. Okay, now on to the demo section. I have a well wedged bit of clay. Um, it's really important, especially for the clay that you'll be pulling for a handle, that you wedge it out, you know, maybe even more than clay you would throw, just to make sure that there's no cracks or air bubbles or any of that to interrupt when you're pulling the handle. Um, I have a form that I will be attaching a handle to. And one of the things that I do, usually when I'm putting handles on things, I'll have maybe like 12 at a time. So I'll have several forms that I'm working on. So I've gone ahead and kind of treated the bottoms of them and I've went ahead and stamped my initials on it. And this for me is just kind of how I work. So I'll do that to all of them. And one of the things I do is when I'm putting my stamp on it, I kind of look at the form and decide, you know, where I want to attach the handle. This particular form had a little bit of a rise here, and so that's where I was going to attach the handle. So to let myself know this ahead of time, that's where I put the stamp. Generally, this is kind of my mark. I'll put the handle just inside the stamp on all of them. So I have the form. I have a bucket of water. It can be any, you know, container of water. The thing that's important is I fill the water relatively high in the bucket because when one of the first things you do when you're pulling a handle off the mug is you dip the clay almost to the attachment joint. So you want to have your water high enough that you're able to go that far in. And then the other thing is you don't want your water to be murky and just be like you're throwing water. You want to have clean water. Um, then I have a knife and a scoring tool. So these are this is all you really need. And you're maybe actually I'm gonna go get a towel. And a towel. So first I just kind of pinch off, you know, maybe something that's a kiwi size bit of clay off or a little bit smaller and then I'm rolling it into a carrot shape. So you want it to be kind of a, this tapered form, you know, thick to thin. And I will say while I'm doing this is what I'm showing you today, there are so many ways to make handles. This is one of many ways. So now I'm using the table and I'm rolling it on the table so that it's not all my finger markings aren't on it. It kind of flattens out the handle some. And the next step, so you can see how it's kind of smoothed it out. The next step is I just pound it flat. So I start kind of giving it, instead of being circular, I'm giving it a top and a bottom. So when I'm tamping it, I'll also go back and forth so that I'm eliminating, you know, having too much of that ridge. You know, I almost hand build these handles before attaching them. Just to give you all a thickness, you know, it's relatively kind of a generic tapered shape. So the next step is I cut kind of, you can see here how it's thicker and then it kind of becomes more consistent in the thickness. I'll generally cut here and I'm cutting at an angle that's going to influence the angle that it comes off of the mug. So here I've just kind of cut that top part off and I've cut it at a bevel. It's now going to kind of shoot off of the mug. I go ahead and kind of cut a shape. I really like having a thicker joint at the top and then maybe more like a ribbon shape as it comes off. So I cut it in early. I call it a razor. You know, it kind of looks like something you'd shave with maybe. Now at this stage, I go ahead and with my thumbs, I'll form the sides because I want it to be a nice, rounded shape. I don't want anything that has kind of hard edges on it. And now I'm going to go ahead and do the bottom side. Shape this here even. So I'm rounding it to match the shape of the mug. And then I'm just going to go ahead and do the same thing with that back. I'm just kind of softening that back edge. And I'll do more of this when I'm pulling it off of the mug, but 
it's just, you know, it's kind of always think of handles or the way we do a lot in ceramics is it's a practice. And so it's natural to come up with habits that you don't even realize maybe until you do a video and you're explaining your habits. <laughs> so now this handle is ready to, you know, kind of meet its mug. So like I said, I have that stamp that tells me immediately where I'm going. And when I'm doing handles, I'll also, depending on the size of it or kind of that day, I, I will change how high or low that attachment is. Sometimes I like full handles. Other times I like those three fingers. And so I like the look of having it just being attached a little bit lower. So on a bigger one, I tend to do that because I can. So I'm lightly outlining where that handle hits the mug. I'm going to score all the way to the edge. So the thing that's important is when you're pulling off of um, this form is if I don't score all the way to the edge and if I don't score all the way to the edge on the handle, that will kind of start a separation zone and you could pull it off. And I think a lot of times that's what people struggle with when they're first learning how to do this is that problem of pulling the handle off. So first I add a little bit of water, so I'm going to slip and score the attachment. Then I come in here, and you know, when in doubt, just score a little extra. You know, this is the Velcro. This is what's going to, you know, hold the handle on when you're pulling. The other thing I do when I'm scoring is, instead of scoring long marks, I always kind of score little marks. Like I really do kind of, if you could envision, Velcro, that's the look I'm kind of going for. It's this gooey furriness. So that looks pretty good to me as far as scoring marks. Because this is really fresh clay, I only go over it once. You know, it's brand new clay, so I just slipped it very little and I'll score all the way to the edge and I'll cross hatch those. So I've kind of just cross hatched those marks. So as far as uh, attaching, you know, this mug can be anywhere from just leather hard to advanced leather hard. You'll, you might even find you have a preference. I like to be just a, a good leather hard. I'm always holding right behind where I'm attaching. So I'll kind of line that bottom up and then press. And when I'm pressing the handle on, I'm pressing it, I'm not pinching, I don't want there to be a thin spot in the handle. I'm just kind of holding it firmly and pressing on. I want it to be consistent. So now I'm just going side to side and kind of finishing off that attachment. And at this point, because it's really easy to reach, I can go ahead and clean this bottom line up. Notice I'm not letting this handle break. I'm holding it so that it's always kind of staying straight so that it's not weakening the, the shape. And now I'm going to go ahead and dunk it almost all the way into the water, get my hand nice and wet, and start pulling. So when I'm pulling, I'm kind of cleaning it up. You know, I did a lot of this um, in the beginning stages. So I'm just kind of softening what I have already and cleaning it up a little bit. Um, when I teach handles and classes, I kind of, I try to explain pulling with three basic hand tricks. So here, I'm trying to kind of thin this edge out and soften it. And so I'm using this portion of my thumb. Like I've got my thumb, you know, kind of close to the palm of my hand, and then I'm bringing these fingers in so that the clay is forced right there in the crease. I, in class, I call this the puppet. I try to think of it in that, you know, just for memory reasons. So I take this, I'm putting the handle right in that crease, and then I'm wrapping my fingers around the handle. If my goal was to widen the handle, then I might use, I call this the scissor, scissors. Um, I might use the scissors and kind of come front and back. It's important to hold your mug in a way that you're able to easily rotate front and back. So if I do a couple scissors, then I would do front and back with the scissors. The third one is, you know, the okay sign. It's where you're just kind of rounding it. Maybe you're trying to narrow it or soften those, the edge, not sharpen them, but soften them. Um, then you might use this trick. 
The key with this is you don't want to use all your fingers. You want to make sure because that creates too much friction and then you'll pull your handle off. So you want to make sure that you're just using that top finger when you're doing that. So if you get into a situation where when you're pulling you're like, oh no, I can see that it's coming unattached on the top. One way, if it's you know, barely happening, one thing you can do is when, you, when you're pulling, so you're pulling, but when you start that pull, push up. So kind of push up and then pull, push up and then pull. And sometimes that'll eliminate that problem. I tend to like a thinner handle, either something that's a little narrower or just a little bit thinner. And that's just a preference, you know. That doesn't make it mean, you know, it's better or worse. It's just my own preference. So now it's coming time. I'm wiping my hands so that I can get a good grip on the handle. I'm going to hold the tail end of it and I'm going to flip. It's coming to where I can attach that bottom side. So this is really soft clay because we've added so much water to it. And I'm looking at it visually, kind of saying, okay, proportionally, how wide do I want this? You know, where is it going to touch? And I, you know, for me, that's pretty good right there. So I'm going to just tack it. I barely kind of tack it on. I look at it. I make sure that I'm pretty even. And then I'll kind of wipe it off. Then I add just a little piece at the bottom that is a finishing touch. So now I'm just taking that little attachment there, that little uh, bit of clay at the bottom, and I'm smoothing it out and kind of giving it that finished edge. And I will say, you know, when I, I've been doing handles, you know, when I started clay, that's one of the first things you learn. And I've definitely gone through phases with handles, you know. I used to pull them and have them set up on the table. And, um, but this is kind of, this has stuck around with me for a while. I just really like the look of something that's been pulled off of the form itself. So then the last thing I do is I look at it and I'll just shape it out a little bit. I like having kind of a slight square. I might even push this up some, shape it slightly. So after that, you know, that's pretty much it. I will say that I work with a coarser clay body, so a lot of times I'll get these little kind of tears that are just surface tears. So what I'll do at that very end, after I have um, everything kind of set up, I'll just barely get my finger wet and I'll just smooth those surface tears out. There you have it.